Hey guys. All right. Hi. Hello. I figured it out. All right. Isn't this cool? This is cool. I'm not familiar with this live technology in Instagram. It's well, amazing. So on Skype, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. Um, I've had a lot of things going on today, but I made time for this, and it's uh, it's really special. It's nice to be here. Nice Thank to you. send out some energy. Yeah, I mean, today was a particularly frenetic day for me, particularly, and I felt like in my own world things were spinning and such. And my old pattern is just plow through it, don't focus on it. But then I said later on, wait a sec, I need to kind of come back to a place of calm and not just power through it without any uh, regard to uh, how I truly feel. Okay. Um, yeah, we always have to come back to our heart and take a moment to look at the perspective of mm -hmm. how we're looking at things. And most of the time we're reacting to them instead of actually witnessing them. And when we begin to witness things, we start to kind of change our reaction to them. They mm -hmm. almost don't seem as important or as upsetting as they did before. I, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I am beginning to learn that more practically so in, since this is your first time doing this the way that it works is that people sort of join whenever they open up their instagram or some people heard about it through our message so they're here exactly at five and other people are just joining in and other people will join later in the day so that's kind of how it is and if okay. you see at the bottom you can see the people who joined um it says who joined and then they can leave comments and such. So that's my dad who's there. And, Hi, dad. Um, and then that's my mom. Hi, mom. So they're always, uh, <laughs> always supporting me. That's good. Yeah. That's good to have a support system. And yeah. can people ask questions? They can. So they can either type a comment in the bottom um, where it says comment, or there's a little question mark button where um, they can type a question. Okay. And so, so, yeah, at any time, feel free to ask any questions, followers. And part of the trick of doing this is that you kind of, I kind of weave in those instructions at random points throughout the video in case people have joined. Hello, Gary Shear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. I'm going to kind of get the message out and not really play with the technology so much. Go ahead. Um, but I'm trying to see that you have a view of me. I can see I'm kind of low and you're higher. So I'm going to sit up here. I don't mm -hmm. know if you'll lose me. Oh, no, okay. that's pretty good. Yeah. All right. And I can, can reorient. Hear me? I can hear you fine. Terrific. So we so talked briefly about coming to a place in our hearts where um, during this confusion right now, but it could represent at any time in our lives, you know, we all have upset. And um, there's a little bit of an echo or feedback. Is that because I'm hearing me and you? Um, yeah, don't worry about that. I'll fix that. Okay. So... I guess what I want to share with people who don't know me, my name is Bonnie Ringer, and um, I'm not used to having a direct audience like this. It's usually people that have already come to me, and so we're doing stuff on Zoom, and we do stuff on um, Skype right now. But Are you still getting an echo? A little bit, but it's okay. I'm going to continue. Okay. I think that's better. Um, 
so you wanted to know who I was and what I do and how long I've been doing it. I think those were some of your questions so that some people could get their feet wet in the water to, to use your verbiage, right? Yeah. Um, so my name is Bonnie Ranger. That's my name. But I was given the name Swaha Devi, and it means fire goddess. And it's a representation of the teachings I've had over the past 35 years, in addition to doing physical practice uh, all around the world, which are the asanas of yoga, there's many other limbs. And one of those limbs is pranayama. And one of those other limbs is meditation. And it all is threaded together to make this beautiful tapestry. It's not just one thing by itself. If I only work on my physical practice, then my emotional, mental self gets left behind. But some of the tools that I told you I would share with you when we go into this, I'm going to bring people through some pranayama, but this is a book that I highly recommend. It's The Science of Pranayama. It's a great book. And when we do pranayama, it means breathing exercises. A lot of the things I'm going to show you, the books and the different things that are available to help you, I have here in the Shala. Not that I have a store, but I have a little section where I have some stuff that I have available for sale. To better help you understand, there's also the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. This is my favorite translation and commentary, the Sri Swami Sitchananda. It is one of the best books out there. And there's so many questions answered by going through this particular one, this particular commentary. Again, there's plenty of them out there, but that's my favorite. Tell me if I'm showing you too many books. These are really good ones, though. I think it's great. And just for people who don't know how we know each other, uh, a few oh, years yes. ago, I lived in upstate New York. I was working at a boarding school uh, up in Spring valley i think that's what it was called and in muncie, maybe. In muncie <laughs> and um i looked up yoga studios near me and yours was very close and so i took a drive and the first time i arrived at the place i said i called because i said i'm in a residential neighborhood uh is this is and i couldn't tell which house was yours because there were cars all over a cul-de-sac and so I called and I said, hi, is this the Shala? And then somebody said, mom, it's for you. <laughs> and it was, I think it was your daughter who picked up. And then you said, yeah, come into the house. Uh, and so then I took the journey into your basement and I was like, whoa, this is so cool. Like I'm going on a journey. And uh, I was just sort of absorbed by the place. And maybe you could tell people a little bit about the Shala through the talk that we're going to have? Um, sure. So like I said, I've been doing this 35 years. And when I started teaching all around the county, I had to rent space from everybody. So I rented space in Nyack. I rented space in New City, Bardonia, Blava, all over the place. And at the time, I was in, in different housing. And when we built this house, I had the intention of making sure it was the perfect house and the perfect space with a private backyard and such in the cul-de-sac so that everybody could come in and park their cars easily and effortlessly, be complete privacy and filled in with the woods. And we built it with the intentions of me teaching here. And the whole downstairs was transformed into the yoga space. And there's a lot of healing done here. There's a lot of transformation done here. Um, I've had hundreds of people come through here, many teachers. I've had the Buddhist monks come in that are Tibetan Buddhist monks. They came in to bless the space. I've had the space also done with energy workers who said it's the clearest space they've ever been in. So it's a place of a lot of healing, a lot of transformation. And I painted the murals on the wall to inspire people. Um, you're just seeing one little section of it. And then the other side has, you know, a sitting area and the place to buy different things. And everything's really done here. I've done workshops here. I've done kids yoga. I've done chair yoga. I've done 
master classes and stuff like that. So when I'm home in New York, this is where I teach out of. And when I'm not here, I teach, you know, in Mexico or Beijing or Germany or wherever I travel. But um, it does have a very nice, happy feeling to it. And it's a very small private space. And I'm really excited when people gather here. And in the warmer months, we have a beautiful enchanted garden yoga deck that my husband and I built. So it's the best of both worlds, which is lovely to be out there listening to the birds sing and have the incense burning, wafting by and the beautiful sun coming through the trees and, you know, the dappling sun dancing and it's nice. Yeah, I, I feel like having a really good environment is like the key to at least starting a practice. Um, anybody could probably set up their own little space, their own little sacred space within their home during quarantine, anywhere where you can roll out a mat or even, you know, have a meditation bench to sit on is enough room and some pillows and that would work for you too. Um, you know, if you're in a small confined space, I've been getting um, information from people telling me that they're setting up their attic or their basement or their closet as a room and things like that and it's working for them. That is awesome. So yeah, happy to hear what you have to say about the practice that you want to share with us today. Okay. I just want to show you the other book. These are all different gurus that are that I spoke about, but again, this is Swami Sitchananda, great, great Swami. And this is highlights from five decades. Um, I don't know if you can see this, Sri Brahmananda Saraswati. This you can get up at Ananda, which is up in Monroe. Um, that's Guruji. This is another one. Um, if you start to get into your physical practice more at the Hatha Yoga of Pratipika, this is a very excellent book to read. And it's just, just to find information, you know, you do with it how you want it. Once you find it, you take it or you leave it. For me, it's helped me tremendously get through a lot of things. But the two that I wanted to focus on is the science of pranayama, because I'm going to take you through some breathing exercises to help quiet your monkey mind. It's actually called Nadi Shoda. Nadi Shoda is Sanskrit, and translation, it means to calm your mind or to nerve calm, to calm your nerves, which is good. And the other one is to connect. This book has been really a wonderful, I took this guru's book, not this particular one, but this guru's book to Sedona when I went there the first time on my journey and I did a pilgrimage. I did all five vortex in four days. My husband thought I was trying to kill him, but I wasn't, that's a joke because I just wanted him to get to all the vortex without a map, with any, with no guide, nothing. And I just took the guru's book and I went through all the, the different vortex. So he has a way of speaking to you. It's Il Chi Li and the book is Connect and that's good for meditation for people. That is that that ashram in Arizona that you told me about? Yes. Because yes. I donated money to them. Oh, yay. I good. Did. Thank you for that. I, You're I, welcome. I did follow through on my promise. So I want to tell you what happens when you make a donation. Funny you should say that because we're, we're doing this to help people lift up, right? So besides being home for quarantine or inside for quarantine, wherever you are, these are some great books you can order on amazon.com or you can connect to the different ashrams to get the book sent to you to read. But another way to help lift you up is to give a donation. Today, I wired hundred dollars to a little boy Jai Tai Gangbo in Tibet who is in a situation of building his own home brick by brick literally and that made me feel so good that I could help him out right now so I've been connected to him since 2009 when I went to Tibet and reconnected to him in 2011 and met him in the orphanage it doesn't have to be a hundred dollars wired to to 
Tibet. It could be a donation as you just did. It can be a, it could be anything for anybody. My stepmother's sewing masks for people, but do something for somebody and that'll also help change your constitution of how you feel. I totally agree with that, that like service to the community is very important. It could be bigger than your own community. It could be outside your box. It could be anywhere you want to send it where you think it's going to help somebody. There's always somebody worse off than you, and they always can use a helping hand. I told you, God gave us two hands, one to help ourselves, one to help others. So let's begin. I like to do some sound vibration. This is my Tibetan singing bowl. I know you have one from the Shala. I do. Which I, I have a few here, different sizes, but let's let the sound just wash over us now. Taking a breath, expanding our rib cage and the connective tissue, and then exhale your navel towards your spine, sitting up nice and tall. Squeeze your pelvic floor, really empty out all the prana. Inhale again. Big breath in, expand your rib cage and all the connective tissue. Exhale your navel towards your spine. Really tighten, about two to three fingers below your belly button. Tighten, tighten, tighten. Inhale again, big breath of life. More air, more air, more air. And then exhale, tighten your pelvic floor. I start each and every class with oming. Oming is welcoming divine energy into the space with any name or form you choose to put on that arm. Big breath in. Oh. Again, big breath in. Oh. Once more, big breath in. Oh. I'm going to tell you a student teacher chant. I will give you the translation interpretation in English instead of the Sanskrit native tongue. I ask and I pray that our practice be protected and nourished by our guardian angels and spirit guides, as well as all the saints and the seekers, the sages and the gurus, all the high energy that they step forward and protect and nourish our practice. I ask and pray that our studies together be brilliant and effective and that we never hate or dispute one another. I ask for divine blessings of peace for you, for me, for everybody you love and hold dear to your heart and all beings, including the animals. We say to one another, Namaste. Namaste. Namaste means I honor the light within you. So we're going to do the alternate nostril breath with retention. I did another program and I did box breath. If people are repeating it, we're gonna do alternate nostril, like I said. And again, it's called Nadi Shoda. You take your left hand and jhana mudra. Mudras are seals. You put your pointer on your left hand to your thumb and you turn your hand up and then place it on your hip. You take your right hand in Vishnu mudra putting down the pointer and the middle finger to the heel of your hand. Exhale everything out through the nose. Close off the right nostril with your thumb. Inhale through the left side only for three counts. 
pinch it close and start squeezing your anus forward to your perineum. Tighten your pelvic floor. Tighten your stomach muscles and lift your chin to your chest, kiss them together. Exhale through the right side only for six. Inhale through the right. Pinch it close. And again, squeeze your pelvic floor as tight as you can. You're trying to bring the energy up. Draw the navel in towards the spine. Lift your chest towards your chin. Exhale through the left. Inhale through the left for three, please. And retain. Start to witness on the space between your eyebrows. Continue engaging your pelvic floor. Draw your navel towards your spine. Lift your chest to your chin. Exhale through the right side only for six. Inhale through the right. Retain. Again, squeeze your pelvic floor. That's called Mula Bandha. Draw your navel toward your spine, chin to your chest. Focus on the space between your eyebrows. Exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Retain. Engage your pelvic floor and the second lock. Exhale on the right. For six. Inhale on the right for three. Retain. Engage your pelvic floor, navel, chin to chest. You have to come up as you lock your locks. Exhale on the left. Inhale on the left. Retain. Squeeze your pelvic floor as tight as you can. Draw your navel towards your spine. Lift your chest to your chin. Mula Bandha, Uddiyana, Jalahanda locks. Exhale through the right slowly. Six count. Inhale on the right. Retain. Engage all your locks still. Pelvic floor, navel, and throat. Exhale on the left. One more cycle. Inhale on the left. For three, retain. Engage the pelvic floor, then the navel, then the chin. Lock. Exhale on the right. Inhale on the right. Retain. Focus on the space between your eyebrows. Squeeze your pelvic floor. Navel to your spine, chin to your chest. Exhale on the 
Exhale on the left. Lower your hand to your right knee. Take a breath in and bring your left hand to your left knee. Keep your eyes closed for a moment. And right from here, we'll go into a guided visualization. Bring your awareness to your left foot and relax your left foot, ankle, knee, and thigh. Relax your right foot, ankle, knee, and thigh. Let your legs feel loose, heavy, relax. Bring your awareness to your buttocks and your hip joints. Relax your buttocks, your hips, and now your lower back. Start to work up the vertebrae along your back, relaxing the lower back, the middle back, the upper back, the space between your shoulder blades. Relax, relax, relax. Bring your awareness to the front of your body. And relax your pelvic floor, your stomach. Your diaphragm, your chest. Your heart, your lungs, the collarbone region, and your shoulders. Bring your awareness to your hands, your left hand. Relax your fingers. palms of your hands, the back of your hands, your wrists. Relax the left forearm, the elbow, the inside of the elbow, the upper arm, and the upper shoulder. Feel your shoulder and trapezius muscles relaxing on the left. Bring your awareness to the right hand and relax your fingers, the palm of your hand, the back of your hand, your wrist, your right forearm, your elbow, the inside of your elbow, your upper arm, the biceps and tricep, the whole upper arm, the upper shoulder, the trapezius muscles. Let your whole upper body the front and the back and your legs relax. Bring your awareness to your neck. We have eight vertebrae in our neck. Go ahead. 
and relax each vertebrae in the back of your neck. And when you get to the last vertebra in the base of the skull, right at the base where the medulla is, notice if you can feel pressure or a sensation there. Relax your throat. Relax the front of your neck and your throat, and then go back to the base of the skull, the medulla. That's where your energy comes in and out through your body. Feel that energy. Notice if my words bring you to a place where you can feel a sensation there. back to the front of your neck, relax your jaw, your lips, your tongue, your cheeks, your left eyebrow region, and your right eyebrow region. your forehead. Now go to the space between your eyebrows for close proximity. Try to feel there's a pulse there or as if somebody swiped a light piece of tissue paper over it. Go to that energy. Relax the sides of your head, your ears, the back of your head, and the top of your head. The top of your head is your crown chakra. That's direct connection to all that is. Let's hold that space for a little while. Your breathing should have gotten very, very calm, very, very slow, maybe even unnoticeable. Hold that energy at the top of the head or near the third eye, the space between your eyebrows or the base of your skull. Stay in the upper regions and begin to imagine, sense, feel, However it comes to you, every cell, every atom, every molecule, realigned and readjusted. So realigned and readjusted to bring to you what is for your divine highest good. Ask for it, believe it, receive it, and have gratitude for it. See your bodies healthy. See your minds calm. See your heart joyous. See your faces smiling. See goodness around you. And have gratitude that your eyes can see the smiling faces around you. The blooms of all the trees and the daffodils. That your ears can hear the songs of the birds or the laughter of the children. Have gratitude that you have lips that can taste food. Have gratitude that if somebody's baking chocolate chip cookies, you can smell the deliciousness of it through the house. Have gratitude for all your blessings Or if we have a house and clothes and food, we have everything. We don't need much materialistic things. Everything we need is inside 
the center of our chest, the level of our heart. We have an opportunity to be still, to be quiet, and to go within. All that we want, all that we are looking for, everything that we're yearning for, everything is within. I always tell my students, we are divine beings here on a spiritual journey housed in a physical body. We have to be friends with our bodies, be kind to our bodies. They are our best friends. They are serving the purpose of taking our soul around in this lifetime. We have to be good to them. Nurture them, love them. Never hurt or abuse them in any way. And then have gratitude that you get to be here to experience all the things around you. When a challenge or something bad happens, it's an opportunity for growth. My dear friend, may she rest in peace, Joan Saval, would always say, it's growing pains. We need to have growing pains to grow wiser, to get more connected to our higher selves. So don't get frustrated and upset when something doesn't work out your way. Sometimes there's a bigger lesson. Always forget the upset connected, but remember the lesson. That's what J.P. Vaswani used to say. And as long as I'm quoting all my teachers that I had an opportunity to meet and practice with and learn from, the Dalai Lama used to say, you get credit just for showing up. So whether you could do the pranayama or whether you were able to do the guided visualization, whoever showed up today, whoever received whatever they received, they get credit just for showing up. Take awakening breath and feel your belly pop a little. Exhale, tighten your belly. Inhale again. Take another breath. Exhale, tighten your belly. Inhale, wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Squeeze your shoulder blades together and stretch your arms all the way up to the sky. Look up high, stretch, stretch, stretch. Oh, good. Start to come back to your awakening breath. You don't want to overdo it with your knees. Move your body a little bit. Exhale. So I like to meditate and I recommend it that you do some pranayama and then you do some guided visualization and then you can just sit still. Meditation is just sitting still. Maybe you want to just witness your breath. Maybe you just want to witness yourself sitting still. But then at some point, you just become very quiet and you kind of get lost in the lap of God, which I already said is any name or form you want to put on that higher divine energy. I do, however, suggest if you can, you light a candle. I have candles lit over here. You light an incense to try and change the atmosphere where you are, clear the space, you can sage if that's something you have. You can start with the different sounding bowls if you want to. Uh, my incense of choice always brings me back to the original ones, they're Nag Champa, you can buy them all over. I do sell them here, at my little corner store. <laughs> um, how can people order online? People could order online by coming to Bonnie's Yoga Shala, my actual website, and there's a store link. On your phone, you have to click to the arrow to the left to open up the store. It's much better on the laptop, but you can order things through PayPal. 
Um, and that's how you can get them. I also have different singing bowls here in the shawl. I have a few of those this size and a little smaller. And I also have some of the books that I recommended. Of course, the very first one, which is the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. I think people should read this. It, it just is a nice look. If you've never sat down and read anything yogic, it's a nice place to start. I also sell meditation benches that were handmade by my husband. He also sells blocks. But if you can't do the physical practice, the asanas, you can start with pranayama. Everybody can do those. I had students that used to be two and three years old here, and I had students that used to be 93 years old here, and everybody can do breathing exercises, which is nice. I don't recommend the alternate nostril breath one when you're driving. Maybe you want to do the box breath, you know, because you want to keep your hands on the wheels, but there's lots of different ones you could do. And I also have a YouTube channel called Bonnie's Yoga, and there's chair yoga on that. There's a 30-minute floor workout if somebody wants to try. I don't want to call the workout, excuse me. I want to tell you there's a 30-minute yoga practice. It's a short version of what I usually teach. And there's some more information and some other challenging ones. It's just another place to get information. And if people are interested in continuing any type of practice with me or reaching out, they could do it live one-on-one. -on -one. I don't do Instagram, but I do Skype and that's Bonnie Ringer on Skype and they could partake in a class. There's a class schedule on my website as well. And they can see what's up and running. And that too is paid through PayPal or Venmo. And that's what we're doing right now until we can all gather as a community and people could come to the Shala maybe. Yeah, that's, that's great. And um, before we wrap things up, a question that I really am curious about is what is one important thing for people to remember during the chaotic times that we find ourselves in to either to reassure them or to give them grounding. Um, yeah. I could give you a long version or I can give you a short answer. And the short answer is this too shall pass. So no matter what, no matter what, this too shall pass. And I, that's the short version, you know, when I had horrific things going on in my life. And I said, Oh, you know, I don't know if it, because it's hard to see past what actually is. It's hard to be past pain and suffering and upset. It's hard to be past physical pain and upset. It's when you're in it, but you have to dig deep. You have to go to your happiest thoughts, your most happiest place, your most joyful place and try to see that tomorrow when you wake up, it's, I know people think it's another Groundhog Day, but we had a sunny day here in New York. I know in California, it's sunny every day, but here in New York, we had a sunny day and it was a different day. And we all got outside in the yard. And I know that this too shall pass because that is one thing that has been consistent. And that's one thing we can always depend on is change. Nothing stays the same. Nothing lasts forever. Even all of us, everything with a name, everything with form will leave at some time, will pass away at some time. Nothing stays the same. Everything will change. It always does. And we have to understand that, you know, even if you have to get up in the morning and, and tell yourself, hip, hip, hooray, another day and put on your smile and, you know, just I used to call it my Aunt Janie, no matter what, God bless her. She would always say, she put on a smile, you know, and she had a lot of kids, Mark, Dawn, Beth, Grace, Jonathan, Judy, a lot, a big family to raise. And every day, Janie would put a smile in. I'd say, how do you do it? She goes, you just thank God and you put on a smile and you, you do what you have to do. I give so much 
empathy and my condolences for all the people that have t we've lost during this. And I know that they will be missed. We have to understand that we need to make things better for each other and one another for us to coexist together. And, you know, the Dalai Lama says love and compass compassion are not a luxury, they're a necessity. We have to help one another. And the short answer is this too shall pass. It will. And that's your bright light in the end. That's, it will pass. We just have to have gratitude for the little things. I don't know if there's anybody out there having to build their house brick by brick today, right now, and doesn't have a house to sleep in that I know personally. I know there are homeless people, but I'm saying somebody who has a phone that's listening to this broadcast has enough money to have a phone to listen to this broadcast, and I'm hoping to God they're not out building a house by hand for themselves brick by brick. And I know people that are personally that are doing that, so count your blessings, you're doing okay. That's really beautiful. Um, yeah, so we're at the 45 minute mark. Yes, we because, are, exactly. So we have to say Om Shanti to one another. Yeah, yeah, right. let's let's wrap it up and let let me know how you like to wrap things up. Okay, we're going to say um we're going to say Om Shanti 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 he together. Ready? Okay. Om Shanti 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 Thank you for the privilege and the honor to be of service to you and all the followers that showed up today. God bless. Namaste. Namaste. Bonnie, you can find her online at bonniesyogashala.com and Bonnie Ringer, you can find her on Instagram. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Thank and we'll you. be in touch. Thank you.